For the blind, the world can be a lonely place. But for this young man, electronic technology has recently opened a whole new horizon. Uh, yes, could I have the Britannica reference on vision? It's just behind you. This graduate student no longer needs to rely exclusively on the information gathering techniques normally available to the blind. Though his eyes are totally sightless, he can see with a sense of touch the same print which you and I can read. The electronic instrument which opens this new horizon is the Opticon for optical to tactile converter. It is estimated that there are 175,000 people in this country with no useful vision for reading purposes. Most of them have adjusted to their incapacity and have pursued the same careers as sighted persons. There are blind business executives, housewives, technicians, teachers, factory workers, computer programmers, and so forth. But regardless of their pursuits, all these people face one common frustration, the difficulty in assimilating printed information. For more than 150 years, Braille has been the blind man's form of print. Though he has learned to use it with facility, it is bulky and still requires the aid of a sighted person to transcribe from the original standard print. For large quantities of information, the voice continues to be the most common transferal method. Talking books in the form of phonograph records and tapes offer the blind person access to some literature, but the library is limited. Most transferal of vital information must rely on person-to-person -person communication. This is a slow, time-consuming process which requires two people. And what is equally frustrating for the blind person, there can be no such thing as confidential printed information. No one was more keenly aware of these problems than Dr. John G. Linville, chairman of the Department of Electrical Engineering at Stanford University in California. Dr. Linville's daughter, Candy, had been blind since she was a little girl. As a serious and gifted student, she was becoming frustrated by the tedious methods required to absorb the information her textbooks offered. As a college student, she would require as much as 1,000 hours of a reader's service per semester to meet the academic requirements. There had to be a better way. It was then that the idea for an electronic sensory device was born. In 1965, Dr. Linville joined forces with Dr. James C. Bliss, who had spent previous years working on sensory devices with MIT's Sensory Aid Research Group. Together, they painstakingly unraveled the endless problems of design and development in the Stanford laboratories. New concepts in integrated circuitry were necessary to meet design requirements. Miniaturization was a problem, and so was money. Research takes a lot of it. The eventual momentum came from the United States government's Office of Education, which provided more than a million dollars in research funds. After six years of hard work in the research and prototype stages, a separate corporation, Telesensory Systems Incorporated, was formed to manufacture the device. Stanford University was a major stockholder. The first production model came off the Telesensory Assembly benches six months later. Its name? Unnatural. Opticon. For Dr. John Linville, the development of the Opticon has been a labor of love. 
no one can describe how it works any better than he. Uh, the Opticon is an optical to tactical converter which makes it possible for blind people to read the ordinary printed material of the sighted. Um, the, the method by which the device works is very simple. The person needs this device, which is a camera, and it has a, an aperture which looks at about a capital letter of pica type over the material to be read. Whatever is focused onto the retina of this camera is then reproduced um, on the tactile screen of the Opticon, and the person reading puts a finger there and feels exactly the same image that a sighted person sees with his uh, retina of his eye. Candy Linville, whose sight as eyes inspired the development of the Opticon, has served as the prime research subject for her father and his associates. Though Dr. Linville may be the authority on how Opticon works, it is Candy who can best demonstrate if it works. The seminary years and the three which followed in an Albany law office added something, no doubt. Compared, though, with what came before or after, they were unimportant except for two things. The, he stored up a knowledge of law that later stood him in good stead and somewhere Along the way, he fell in love with Jane Lathrop. This light display, which is used by the instructor in training a blind person to use the Opticon, demonstrates how candy receives the printed images. Each dot of light represents one of the 144 vibrating reeds positioned under her index finger.